Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about Newtone low voltage transformers. All Newtone solid state intercom systems are powered by low voltage transformers. They're low voltage systems. And today we're going to talk about the four most common modern transformers that Newtone has used. So starting in 1984 with the IM3003, Transformers were designed to be mounted inside the wall housing behind the master station. Prior to that, transformers are generally mounted remotely somewhere else in the house, say in a garage or a utility room or in a closet ceiling or some other place like that. But starting in 1984 with the 3003, to simplify installation, transformers are mounted in cans that drop through the top or the bottom of the wall housing behind the master station. So these are the four most common low voltage transformers Newtone has used since 1984. You have a 105T, which is rated at 16 volts and 15 watts. Transformers have two important ratings that you need to know. They have the voltage that the transformer supplies and they also have the wattage. The wattage is the amount of power the transformer can easily supply without overheating. To think about the power or the wattage of a transformer, you think about it in the same way as you would a light bulb. A 15 watt light bulb is less bright, therefore it has less power, than a 301T, which is also rated at 16 volts, but 30 watts. So a 30 watt light bulb would be brighter than a 15 watt light bulb, so if you look at it from that perspective, 30 watts is more power than 15 watts. So we have a 105T, which is 16 volts at 15 watts. Then we have a 301T, which is 16 volts at 30 watts, twice as much power at the same voltage as a 105. Then we have a 401T. This is 24 volts at 40 watts. So it's a higher voltage rating than a 301, and it's a little more powerful. It has 40 watts instead of 30. And then lastly, we have an 801T. 801T is 18 volts, so it's less than the 401, but more than the 301. But it's rated at 72 watts. And on, because of the power that an 801T supplies, it's actually rated at 72, what are called volt amps. It's not important to understand about volt amps. It's just a more modern rating than watts. Essentially, you can look at it the same way. It's 72 watts of power. Newtone transformers are a very reliable product, and Newtone's been making low-voltage transformers since the late 1930s when they began to make doorbells, so they know a little bit about making transformers. Newtone transformers are all what are called Class II transformers, which relates to how they're constructed, how they were intended to be installed, and what type of safety devices they have built into them. The common safety device in a 105, a 301, and a 401 is a device called a thermal limiter. The thermal limiter is a heat sensing device and it's built into the inside of the transformer. If for some reason the transformer were to become overly hot, usually because the device that it's powering, say your intercom master station, has a failure in it and the master station is overloading the transformer, the transformer will work really hard to try to supply enough power to the set, but if there's a failure it won't be able to and that causes the transformer to get hot. When it reaches a certain internal temperature, the thermal limiter will sense that and it will open. It's like an automatic switch. It will open when it gets too hot and when it opens, it shuts off the primary power to the transformer, therefore letting it cool down. Unless the fault that's causing the overheating has been corrected, once it cools down, the thermal limiter will close again, it will turn the transformer back on, and it will again overheat, which causes it to open and shut off, and the cycle will repeat endlessly until either the device that's connected to the transformer is disconnected or the fault with the device is repaired. Let's look at how a transformer is typically installed. We'll start with the 105T. All transformers have two sides to them. 
they have what is called the primary side. The primary side is typically the side that will have the wires pre-attached to the transformer. This is the side of the transformer that's wired into the electrical system in your home. And you'll see that some transformers, like this 105T, the wires will be marked as black and white, which corresponds with the color coding of electrical systems in homes. But if we look at the 301T, it has two black wires. Why did they do it this way? I have no idea. Transformers are AC devices. There are two types of electricity that you commonly deal with. The electrical system in your home is an AC circuit, it's alternating current. The primary side of a transformer is also an AC circuit. It uses alternating electricity. So when you wire these into the electrical system in your house, or in the wall housing behind your master station, it makes very little difference which wire gets attached to which color wire from your electrical system in your home. If you have two black wires, it doesn't make any difference at all. If your transformer has a black and a white wire, just as good practice, you would attach the white transformer wire to the white wire of your electrical system and the black wire to the black wire because it just makes sense to do it that way. Most transformers don't have a ground wire. The metal chassis of the transformer is the ground and if it's installed as per Newtone instructions this is mounted to a metal bracket. The metal bracket slides down inside a metal can. The metal can is connected to the metal wall housing and the metal wall housing should have a ground on it. So therefore the transformer is grounded. The other side of a transformer is referred to as the secondary side. The secondary side is the low voltage side of any transformer. Typically on class 2 transformers you have screw terminals and this is where the low voltage of the transformer is supplied to. This is where the, ter the wires from your intercom system would be connected. When you have or suspect you have a transformer problem, there are three types of tests that you can easily do to make a determination whether the transformer is at fault or whether it's a problem with the device that the transformer is powering. So let's take a look at how transformers are when they're actually installed. So what we're looking at here is the wall housing for an IM4406 master station. I've taken the master station out so it's easier to see and you can see down here in the bottom of the wall housing here are the two 801T transformers that are used to power the 4406 master station. The primary side or the electrical side of the transformers that are wired into your house electrical circuit, they're down inside the bottom of the, of the mounting of transformer can down here where it's protected and the connections are encased in metal. That's usually required by electrical code and the only part of the transformers that are really accessible are the tops or the secondary sides of the transformers and these are the screw terminals that the power leads from the back of the master station are connected to. So what we're going to imagine here is that we're looking down at the transformers, two 801Ts that power an IM4406 master station and if the master station were still connected there would be a red and a white wire attached uh, to each screw terminals on the transformers. You would have red and white and red and white. And those are the wires that power the master station. I've taken them away so it's easier to see the transformers. So there are three tests that you can easily do if you suspect you have a transformer problem. Once you've opened up your master station, the first test you're going to do is the heat test. And the heat test is easy. You're going to reach inside very carefully and you're going to put your fingers on the metal part of the body of the transformer and feel how hot it is. These transformers are not actually powered up, so right now they're very cool to the touch. A normally operating transformer will be very slightly warm to the touch. And people always ask me, what does very slightly warm feel like? Well, the way I describe it is, if it were a cool fall morning and it was cool outside, if you held the transformer in your hand or touched it and it was slightly warm and felt comfortable, that's about what you're looking for. Warm to the touch, but certainly not hot. If your transformers are warm to the touch, it's a good indication that they may be working correctly and the problem that you're having is not with the transformers. If you reach in here and you feel the transformers and one of them is warm, it's just slightly warm to the touch, but the other one 
is really hot and when you put your fingers on it about as long as you can keep your fingers on it is maybe three seconds and then you pull your fingers away that transformer is another telltale sign that you may notice of an overly hot or overheating transformer is you might notice say if you had a Newtone IM3003 master station in your home and you notice at times that the clock is on and even if you're not using the system at least you can tell what time it is but there's other times it seems like the clock shuts off and it goes away and then on its own it comes back on again. This is an indication of an overheating transformer. If you remember, we talked about how built into Newtone transformers are thermal limiters. Thermal limiters, again, are devices that shut the transformer down if it becomes too hot. If you have an intercom system that the main primary power, say the power that powers the clock on an IM3003, is cycling on and off and on and off endlessly day after day, it's a good indication that your transformer that's powering the IM3003 is overheating and the cycling on and off that you're seeing with the clock corresponds to the cycling on and off that the thermal limiter is creating inside an overly hot transformer. So that's a good indication that you have a problem. But the question at that point is, is it a problem with the transformer or is it a problem with the IM3003? For the most part, probably 95% of the time, it's a problem with the master station. It's not a problem with the transformer. The transformer is reacting to the problem that exists in the master station. So now we've done our heat test. This one is slightly warm and feels good. This one is burning hot, and that may indicate that it's a failed transformer or it may indicate that there's a problem in this example with the 4406 master station it may not have become hot enough to cycle the thermal limiter on and off and cause an obvious sign with the master station that there's a problem but it still could be occurring. Also, in systems that have dual transformers like 3303s and 4406s, it's possible for one transformer to fail and not cause an obvious visual sign on the master station. There may be functions, there will be functions that don't work, but you may not notice it if you just walk by. So we've done the heat test and we've noticed that this transformer is hot. So the next test we're gonna do is the voltage. To do a voltage test, you need a multimeter. It can be an inexpensive analog or an inexpensive digital multimeter. It doesn't really make any difference. Whichever type of multimeter you have, you need to set it on a volts AC scale. And once you have it on an AC scale, remember transformers are AC devices, not DC devices. So if you try to measure the transformer voltage on DC, you'll get an inaccurate reading. So you're measuring on an AC scale. So we'll put the meter aside. And the first test we're going to do is the test to measure the output of the transformers while they're powered on and while the device that they're powering in this case an IM4406 would be still connected to the transformers and we know that these are 801T's which are 18 volt transformers so if we take our test probes from our multimeter you put one probe on each screw terminal and then you read the reading on the multimeter it will read somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 volts. Newton transformers typically will supply more than their rated voltage. The rated voltage is typically the voltage that they'll output under a maximum load and the 4406 ma master station won't create a maximum load situation. So an 18 volt Newtone transformer can put out anywhere from 18 to perhaps 19.2 volts and that's fine. If you're reading zero volts, then that transformer is not putting out any power and it has a problem. So again, the first test is measure the voltage with the intercom system connected to it. So we'll measure this one, let's say it's 18. And then we go over to our second transformer, which if you recall is the one that was hot, and we put the probes on here, and we find that we're only reading, let's say, 6 volts. 6 volts is well under 18, and that indicates that there's a problem somewhere. We still don't know whether it's a problem with the transformer itself, or it's a problem that's being created by the 4406 master station, so that's going to be test number. Test number two 
requires that the wires that connect the master station to each transformer be removed. So you would loosen the screws on the secondary side of the transformers and remove the wires from them. So now we just have what we see here. Two transformers that are connected to the house electrical system and no device connected to the secondary sides of the transformers. If Since this transformer was deemed overly hot compared to the one on the left, at this point we need to let the temperature of the transformers equalize. So we're going to wait a while. You may need to wait up to an hour to allow the very hot transformer to cool down. In most cases it will cool down once the device that it was powering has been disconnected. So let's assume that we've waited an hour and now we test the temperature of the transformers and we find that they are primarily equal. They don't have to be exactly the same but much cooler than it was in the past and once again we're going to measure the, trans the, t the voltage output of the transformers even though the one on the left was say 18 volts the first time we tested it good practice is we'll test it again and we still have 18 and now when we go over to the right hand transformer if you recall when we measured the voltage the first time it was only 6 volts but since we've disconnected the master station and we've allowed it to cool down now we measure the transformer and it measures 18 volts that's a good indication that the transformer is still fine and the fault that was causing it to become overly hot is a problem with the master station. Let's also assume we have a different scenario. We've disconnected the master station from the transformers and we've waited an hour but this transformer still feels hot compared to the one on the left. And when we measure the voltage the first time we measured it, it was 6 and now we measure it and it's still 6. Well, that indicates that this transformer has a failure or is beginning to fail and it needs to be replaced. It's not that common, but it can happen, especially on a transformer that's been hot for a really long period of time. Testing transformers is one of the very first tests you should do on any intercom system when you're looking for a failure or a fault because it is, in some sense, the very beginning of your intercom system. It's the main power source for your master station and the transformers have to be putting out the appropriate voltage and not be cycling on and off because they're too hot. So that's just a brief overview of Newtone transformers and how they're designed and things that you can easily test for. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. The thumbs up is down there on the YouTube page. If you think this video will be helpful to others, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribing to our channel raises our search rankings on YouTube, which means it will be easier for other people to find our videos. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.